Hello chess players, we'll go through the most brilliant games played by the reigning world chess champion Magnus Carlsen. His chess games have inspired many, including children, adults and veterans. But why? Because of his magical ability to outmaneuver his opponents. So sit back, relax and enjoy as we delve into the world of Magnus Carlsen's games that's too played against grandmasters and sometimes super grandmasters. To play like Magnus Carlsen, you need to study the game inside and out. Here is the today's position. We'll begin with important positional observations of the puzzle in terms of pros and cons. We are playing as a white color and this is a complex middle game. We have played castling on the king side and the king is quite safe. We have rook queen battery on the semi open file, knight on the center square and that is also in the open territory. So, one fourth part of the board is known as the quadrant and wherever the king is tight, that is called the king's quadrant. That means our knight is not only on the center square but also in the king's quadrant. Another knight on c3 is also active and bishop on d3 is also aiming towards the king. Now, let us see the another side of the board. Black has played casting on the king's side and the king looks safe. Queen. And both the rooks are not active because they are blocked by their own pieces. Knight on the best square f6 and another is not active. Bishop on e7 is not active while another bishop on b7 is very powerful aiming towards the king. Now pause the video and try to find the sequence of moves that will lead to winning position in this game. You can also write your moves in the comment box. Alright, if you found knight capture f7, that's a magnus move, a brilliant move. We are attacking on queen and offering knight for free. But why? In case king capture the knight, then it will be queen capture pawn check. So this time king is forced to move on f8 square and then bishop to g6 unavoidable checkmate incoming moves. So that's why after knight capture f7, queen goes to c8 and then queen capture pawn. So after this, black has two options by moving the king to f8 or moving queen to b8. But why? Because we are threatening discovered check by moving our knight on d6 square will be attacking on queen. So that's why black resigned the game as white is completely winning in this position. Let us see some interesting moves. Let's say queen b8. So then game would have continued. Knight capture pawn check. And because queen, knight, bishop all are controlling the squares of the black king. Black has forced to move on h8 square. And after that queen g8. A brilliant win sacrifice by Magnus Carlsen. Then knight capture queen is a forced move. And knight f7 checkmate. So. In case after queen capture f6, if king would have got to f8, then knight h8 threatening checkmate on the next move, which is unavoidable. So, this is how Magnus Carlsen won this game. Always trust your instincts and don't be afraid to take risks. Learn from the best, analyze past games, and then practice, practice, practice. Now, let us understand the steps that Magnus Carlsen played to reach this position. Therefore, let's begin from the starting. So game started with pony 4 controlling the center, pony d5, counter attack on the center, Scandinavian opening, pawn takes pawn, queen capture back and here black has played queen early in the game that is 2 on the center square is not good. Pawn d4. Controlling the center square and opening our minor piece bishop, queen back to d8. And here, black is lagging in the development because black's all the pieces are at the starting position and no pawn on the center squares. As the game continued, Carlson played knight f3, developing a minor piece and controlling the center, knight f6, black is developing the minor piece and controlling center squares, c4. Dominating the center squares, e6, controlling the center square and opening the bishop, knight c3, 
developing one more minor piece and controlling two center squares bishop e7 preparing for the castling move bishop d3 developing our minor piece and eyeing towards the king side also preparing for the casting on the king side castling castling pawn b6 so here black decided to develop a bishop on b7 square as a fianchet of bishop queen e2 so here we are improving our pieces preparing for rook d1 bishop to b7 bishop f4 so this is quite an interesting idea taking an advantage of open area and allowing our rook to d1 knight bd7 developing the minor piece rook a to d1 so we have got our rook into the game with this we have developed all the pieces in our game now we are entering into the middle game rook e8 after this move still black rook is blocked rook f to e1 rook queen battery on the semi open e file pawn h6 which does not serve any purpose here knight e5 placing our knight in the king's quadrant pawn h6 and here we arrived at our puzzle position as you know the solution knight capture pawn after queen goes to c8 queen capture pawn threatening discovered check attacking on queen queen b8 knight h6 double and discovered check king h8 queen g8 brilliant queen sacrifice knight capture back and then knight f7 checkmate remember that our aim is not to keep all the moves in our mind but understanding of piece placement and coordination are important i have shared pigeon file in the description box now let me show you the position from the magnus carlson's next game so here is the position on your screen we will discuss in detail in our upcoming moves and i will also reveal the grandmaster's name actually in fact he is super grandmaster i hope you have learned something new today thanks for watching and comment your feedback don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more chess content and game analysis see you next time